The purpose of these videos is to orient you to what components look like and how you act on them. If you haven't watched the Watch Me First video, please do that first as it lets you know what to expect. As you read in Chapter 5, documents in Atlas TI are copies of your data files that Atlas TI has saved for itself. You can provide data from many different kinds of sources in many different formats, but once your data files become documents inside Atlas TI, they all work in the same way. In this video, we look at the different types of data sources, then we discuss some of the actions that can be taken on documents. Common actions can be taken on all components, and these are covered in the later video on the project as a whole. But in this video, we'll focus on the actions specific to documents. Adding or importing data files, editing to change the contents of the documents, grouping documents, filtering to focus attention on only some documents, and interrogating documents. I'll start with adding data files, in which Atlas makes its own copy of your data file, and then I'll move on to importing data files, in which Atlas extracts your data and does some pre-organizing of it. To add a file, you go to the Home tab and add documents, and you can either add a single file or many files. I've added some documents here. I've added some Word files, so I can open them. I've added a PDF file, so I can see that. And I have a picture, a JPEG file. And as you know, I can move that to the right so I can have my text and PDF files on one side and the picture on the other side. I can also add audio or video files. If I come back to the Home tab and add documents, we'll see there's a separate item for this because Atlas invites you to link the video or audio file rather than have it copied because these files are rather large. When you link a video or an audio file, you've got to remember not to move it or change its name on your hard disk, otherwise the Atlas project won't be able to find it. I have a video file here. I'll just clean up the screen first. Here's a video. The lower area presents the entire length of the video clip, and you can move the playhead and decide what you might like to play. And I can play a short stretch. My name is Ben Wolf, and I play the part of Meep. Meep is a... Yes, and I've decided that that's something of interest to me, so I can move these yellow bars and decide that this is a part of the video I'm interested in working on. And then that part is displayed in the vertical area on the right. And I can move the bar up and down and see what I'm interested in and make quotations by dragging my mouse and turning them into quotations in the usual way. Audio files work in a very similar manner, just without the picture. One further kind of document that can be added is a geo document for working with maps. I'll close this video and go back to the Home tab and Adding Documents, and you'll see that you can add a new geo document. And what this does is it accesses OpenStreetMap. And so you can come over here and enter an address. Maybe I'll look for the Santa Barbara High School. Found it immediately, and I can zoom in and decide what I'm interested in looking at. This red item in the middle shows me my location, and I can turn that into a quotation. And now every time I access that quotation, it will bring up OpenStreetMap and show this to me. But in addition, you can create a snapshot of what you've delineated here, and that creates a new document called a Geo Snapshot. And that is a new graphical document like any other graphical document. So this completes the several ways that you can add documents from different sources. In contrast, importing a data file means that Atlas TI extracts the data to create a document and then pre-organizes it in different ways depending on the data source. You can import data you have pre-organized yourself in an Excel spreadsheet or 
you can import data that's pre-organized by other programs. I'll start with data you've pre-organized yourself in an Excel spreadsheet. For example, for organizing survey responses, Atlas TI has very specific requirements for formatting the rows and columns. Each column indicates the type of information to be imported, and each row is an item of data, and one document will be created from each row of the spreadsheet. I'll import the data from this sample spreadsheet. To import documents, we go to this tab, Import, and we ask for Survey. That means to import the data from a spreadsheet. And it will invite me to find the file, which I've saved on the desktop. I'm going to import it now. And we can see here that it's created four documents, one for each line of the spreadsheet. We open the first one. We'll see that these two column headers have become code names. And the data in the cell associated with this first row for John have been entered as data. John also has a comment associated with him, and this has been entered as a document comment, and I can see it right here. Document groups have also been created for the other variables in the spreadsheet, but we'll deal with that more in the component orientation video on document groups. If you would like more details on setting up an import spreadsheet, look at the accompanying PDF on this web page. When importing survey data, you organize the data yourself. The second type of importing takes data already organized by another program. If we go back to import, we'll go for example to Twitter. This button opens your browser in order to register Atlas to access your Twitter account and a selection screen allows you to select tweets by hashtag or author or time period, and the tweets are imported. Here's an example of what a Twitter import would look like. The document is automatically created along with coded quotations to the hashtags and authors, and the codes are pre-organized into code groups ready for further work. Similarly, going back to import, you can register Atlas to access your Evernote database. I'm already registered, and so if I click on it, it presents me directly with my folders and notes in Evernote, so I can select which to import, this one and this one and this one, and it imports these notes as documents in pre-organized document groups. Similarly, data can be imported from reference manager programs, currently EndNote, Mendeley, or Zotero. Right now, the button says EndNote, but I imagine that may be changed to Ref Manager at some point. You select again what you want to import and whether you want the resulting data to be pre-organized by author, publishing year, language, source, and so on. And then a document is created for each one. This completes part one on adding and importing documents. Please watch part two for the remainder of the component-specific actions.